Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Palm Sunday, one of my most favorite days of the year. Because with this um, blessed water, I get to tap all of you on the head. So um, if you want to save your hairdo, especially Tom Daltz, where is, he wants to save um, You know, you just have to be really very careful. Now, I've been told, please spare the glasses. In other words, most of you don't want watermarks on your glasses for the service. I can't promise anything. So we'll see how this Just close your eyes. Yeah, take them off or something like that. This really is one of the most glorious days in the church calendar. It's an opportunity to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ, to thank God for what's coming up, the Holy Week, and uh, just to be reminded of the sacrifice of Jesus for us. That's going to, I think, come out pretty clearly as we talk again about hope, but probably in a different way than you might have expected it a little bit later on in the service. So, um, we'll follow the liturgy that's right here, and let's begin together. By the way, you can't say any of these words. You've got to wake up people around. <laughs> so you've got to say it really loud so that, you know, everybody knows, like the people going by in the truck. Who are looking at us? Wondering, what are they doing? <laughs> Ready? Hosanna to the Son of David, the Blessed King of Israel. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear brothers and sisters, from the beginning of Lent until now, we've been preparing our hearts by repentance and self-sacrifice. Today, with the whole church we herald the beginning of the celebration of the Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem and was welcomed as King with palms and shouts of praise. Today, we greet him as our King, though we know his crown was a crown of thorns and his throne a cross. Therefore, I invite you to follow our Lord this Holy Week from his triumphal entry through his suffering and death to the glory of his resurrection. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray together. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God. Deacon Bob is going to read the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory, to, Glory you, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray together. We, we praise, praise you, Almighty God. God. 
for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was hailed as king by those who spread their garments and their branches of palms along the way. Sanctify these branches with your blessing, we humbly pray, pray, that there may be for us signs of his victory. Grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And of course, you know what sanctify means, right? <laughs> and I've got to make sure I get every. You know, I might as well just carry this with me so that I can get it loaded up. <laughs> This is so much fun. I wish it was whipped cream. But... Careful with the makeup. <laughs> Let's do this every Sunday. You ready? In Chicago, this happens naturally around this time of year. But in California, we have to do it. Frank and Sabrina. This is wrong. <laughs> Don't forget, no, we, got more. we got more. We got more. Okay, and Marcus and oh, yeah, again, I'm good. Just in time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody else I didn't get. Over here. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> hey. Okay, has everybody gotten enough? How about me? Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks, Dottie, for reminding me. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Hosanna to the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now, we're going we're gonna to lead you in the processional in, and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop at the door, and I'm going to say these last words, okay, together just before we go in. Ready? Ready? Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
beautiful to hear you singing just a cappella as we walked in this morning. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Together let us pray. Almighty God, to you my heart is open. All my desires are known. And I can hide no secrets from you. Cleanse the thoughts of my heart by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that I may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather to worship because Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbors as yourself. Because we're still in Lent, let us renew our commitment to keep faith with our faithful God by the Ten Commandments, prefacing our promises with God being my helper. God being my helper, together, I will not worship any other God than the one true God. All other gods are false gods. I will worship God alone. I will not make idols or images in the form of God or make anyone or anything more important than God. I will not treat God's name lightly or with disrespect, but with reverence and honor. I will honor God with my words and in my heart. I will set aside a regular day each week for rest and worship of my Lord, resetting my life around his purpose and plan. I will honor my father and mother by respecting and obeying them because they covenant with God to bless me with wisdom. I will never deliberately kill a fellow human being or hate or hurt them with words and actions, for they, like me, are made in the image of God. I will not have sexual relations with anyone other than my spouse, as this is outside the bounds of marriage as God defines it in the Holy Scriptures. I will not steal or take anything that does not belong to me unless I have been given permission to do so. I will not tell a lie about someone or bring a false accusation against another person because their life, relationships, reputation, and livelihood may become scandalized and jeopardized. I will always tell the truth. I will not desire anything or anyone that does not belong to me or compare myself to others, because longing to have what they have leads to jealousy, envy, and other sins. I will be content and thankful to God, focusing on the people and blessings he has given me, and not what he has not given me. Abba Father, we cannot make these promises and declarations without your help. Strengthen us by your holy word and live fully in us by your Holy Spirit, that we may be transformed more each moment into the image of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior, and Lord, brother, and friend. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Sing along with us Townend's beautiful song, The Power of the Cross. Oh, to see the dawn of the darkest day, Christ on the road to Calvary. Tried by sinful men, torn and beaten then, nailed to a cross of wood. Oh, is this the power of the cross? Christ became sin for us. <laughs> Took the blame for the wrath we stand forgiven at the cross. I'm going to have to sell this. Here we go. Oh, to see the pain written on your face, bearing the awesome weight of sin. Every bitter thought, every evil deed, crowning your 
bloodstained brow. It's the power of the cross. Christ became sin for us. Took the Emmanuel is with us. Yes, yes, he is. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, true and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, let us know you by grace and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory, Savior and Lord, brother and friend. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture readings on Palm Sunday are long, but they're beautiful, every single one of them. It, it's probably the most challenging day for any minister to preach because you would love to focus on any one of these. And then when we read the gospel this morning, um, our vestry members and members of the congregation will read the long gospel from St. Luke. All right, settle in, listen carefully, ask God to speak to you by his Holy Spirit. Isaiah 52, verse 13, 53, 12, prophesies the hope of Jesus in an ugly way that we do not expect. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouth because of him. For that which has not been told them, they see. And that which they have not heard, they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was, pierced, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shares is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sins of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Psalm 22, verses 1 to 21, describes the experience of losing hope by feeling forsaken. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And you, our fathers, trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of the Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like a wax, and it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs have come to me, a company of evildoers has circled me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and from my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11 reminds us that hope is not lost even when we experience emptiness. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the wilderness, in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
we don't get exactly the right order, it's okay because you can just step up to the microphone when it's your turn to read. <clears throat> I leave it right here. I think that's right. Thanks. Luke chapter 22, 39 to 23, 56 begs us hope, even as Luke transforms us to Golgotha and the last breath of Jesus. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he arose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. <clears throat> Then they seized him and they led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And then they kindled the fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together. Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat down in the light and looking closely at him said, this man also was with him, but he denied it saying, woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, you are one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. And after an interval of about a, an hour and still another insisted saying, certainly this man also was with him for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you're talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And then he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they said many other things against him, blaspheming him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council, and they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. Then he said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. <clears throat> then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him saying, we found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar. And saying that he himself is Christ, the king. And Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, you have said so. 
Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he, le he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day. For before this, they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called them together, the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod. For he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man and a release to us Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus. But they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. And a third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt, deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided, decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked, but he delivered Jesus over to their will. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid him on the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people, and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me 
in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, calling out in a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, certainly this man was innocent. All the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the command. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. We've learned about 20 ways to hope. But that's not going to change. We're going to, learn, we're going to learn a few more together. Because we are witnesses to and custodians of the greatest mystery and beneficiaries of the most beautiful love story in cosmic history. Palm Sunday. Holy Week is near. Penitence, prayer, and sacrificial giving give way to the passion and yet it is still time for hope. Five more kinds of hope in Lent. Hosanna hope, we celebrated it out there on the bell tower at Plaza. Ugly hope, there's a hope you weren't expecting. Forsaken hope, another hope you weren't expecting. Emptied hope, you ready to get up and walk out? Last hope. Really? Last hope? Let's start out a little happy. Hosanna hope. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, the crowd shouted. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. It almost sounds like Christmas. 
the folks who met Jesus on his way to Jerusalem were thrilled. Finally, their hope had arrived. Some had been looking for a Messiah who was going to take over militarily. Others were looking for a political coup. They were all partisans. They wanted to be free of the Romans. Some, like Simeon, were called quiet in the land. Sometimes they were described poor in spirit, that very first beatitude. People who in their hearts knew that somehow God would answer their prayer, knew that somehow joy would be theirs when Messiah came, but just didn't know when. It's a little like our lives. Joy, sorrow, when? It's so great when everyone sings your praises. Jesus must have felt exhilarated in his humanity at the very least. When you are celebrated for who you are and who you represent. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When your accomplishments and achievements make your world better. His teaching had transformed the multitudes. That's why they followed him. You're living in hope because that's exactly Jesus. We have the same experiences. When we're on top of the world and everybody's singing our praises, we're <coughs> thrilled. But that isn't every day, is it? Because sometimes things get ugly. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. Life really is a beauty contest when you think about it. None of you got up this morning and didn't look in a mirror for at least a few hour, uh, minutes. <laughs> and as you looked, in the mirror, and some of you have those parabolic mirrors that even give you a closer up look on your face. Some of you said words I shouldn't utter here this morning, and others of you said, I think I might be getting older. <laughs> and others of you said, that needs help. <laughs> and you had help at your disposal, and you showed up here this morning, and you all look wonderful. Life is a beauty contest. And it, it does something to us when it's not so beautiful. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised. And we esteemed him not. In other words, we distanced ourselves from him. We pushed him away. We did what everybody else did. He wasn't beautiful enough. He wasn't handsome enough. We esteemed him stricken, smitten by other human beings. No, that's not what it says. By God and afflicted. See, when power and privilege have fled, your character is defamed and your reputation is despised. And the bloody beating renders you unpresentable, unrecognizable, and undesirable. You've still found hope. Because Jesus was stricken, he was smitten, he was afflicted by God to be our salvation. Never underestimate what God is doing when he takes the beauty out of your life. He's preparing you for hope. 
Sometimes that means you're going to feel forsaken. You, you recognize the psalm, didn't you? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These are words that come from the seven sayings on the cross. The rest of verse 1 in Psalm 22 is not said from the cross. Why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groaning. You ever been in a place that's so ugly? So forsaken? You felt like all of your words and even your prayers were groaning? Could there possibly be hope there? Sometimes you may feel what I've described as an exquisite aloneness when only you and God know where you are. You can be alone all by your personal, physical self in a place where you could be in the middle of a very public meeting and feel this kind of exquisite aloneness when only God and you know where you are or what you might be thinking or how you feel, what your experience is. And abandonment is the only way that you can make sense about the reality of your life. I've been left alone. When your words and prayers groan and rescue seems impossible, you found hope. Because Jesus has been there before you've been there. He was there. He knows exactly where you are and precisely what you need. You are never alone. Even if you feel empty, you're not alone. Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Didn't consider equality with God something to be hugged jealously. That's what that Greek word means. Now think about this. Before the creation of the cosmos, in the divine council of the Trinity, these plans were made. The Trinity decided, we're going to create a cosmos in 3D. We'll add time and space. But before we do that, we're going to create beings in our image that are going to stick their fingers in our eyes. They're going to murder each other. They're going to assassinate their characters and they're going to try to assassinate our character. They're even going to rail at us for creating them. Some are going to say, we shouldn't have been given choice. Look at what that's done. And others will say, but it wouldn't have been dignified had we not been given choice. And they'll fight endlessly with each other. They'll be religious. All kinds of religious. They'll understand me in many different ways. Assuming the Trinity is all guys. Guys, are we ready for this? <laughs> and there wasn't a dissenting voice. And they all participated in the creation. And in some of the opening words of the recorder, it says, and God made man in his image, male and female, he created them. And at the end of that sixth day, when they were created, the Trinity said, this is very good. And then the story began. The story that brings us to this day. The story that started out in the Bell Tower Plaza, 
singing hosannas and quickly changed the minute we came in the doors to what felt like a funeral service. Emptied. He emptied himself. Taking on the form of a servant. Being found in the likeness of people who he created. Really messed things up. You see, when you're empty and there's absolutely nothing left, when being a servant is the only way you can describe or do your life, when sacrifice is required of you and you've given it all you've got, you still have found hope. Because then and only then, you truly know purpose like Jesus knew purpose. And that takes us to the last hope, that long, long scripture reading from the Gospel of Luke. But this little phrase, then Jesus calling out with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope, is what I couldn't help but think of. But that doesn't do justice to what's going on, but it does tell us about the human condition. Why? Because we're always looking for hope from those who really can't give us hope. And we're always looking for help from people who can't fully qualify to give us help. We love to set up heroes. A few Sundays ago, I pointed to a young guy in the second row and had him name all the Marvel superheroes that were up on the screen. And he did it just like that. But Jesus wasn't on the screen. Because he transcends a Marvel superhero anyway. When everything looks hopeless, when you feel like you're breathing out your last, don't be afraid to continue to commit your spirit to God as Jesus did. And don't hesitate to cry out, help me, Jesus. You're my only hope. Now, doesn't that picture and that statement seem to be paradox? It doesn't look terribly hopeful when you look at the picture. And the Anglican liturgy is kind of strange in this way on Palm Sunday. We hardly get a chance to celebrate. And then the liturgy brings us into Holy Week. Almost immediately. As if they sort of planned centuries ago that not everybody would be able to make Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil on Saturday or Sunday morning and Easter. Well, maybe Sunday morning. But they leave you on Palm Sunday with this vision. It doesn't seem hopeful. But it leaves us longing. Help me, Jesus. You're my only hope. I would love to do a spoiler right now and put on the first slide of next Sunday where there's another kind of hope, but it's still Lent, and I can't tell you what kind of hope that is, because it would begin with A and have two L's and another E and an L and a U and an I and an A, but I can't say that. You ruin the suspense. It keep us, to keep us from truly entering Passion Week.
But I want you to know this morning, even though we start with the Hosannas, whether in your life you feel ugly or forsaken or emptied, or it's the last breath you've got, you can still find hope in Jesus. He's there. He's with you. He knows exactly what you need. When you can turn nowhere else, he emptied himself so that he could fill you up. Amen. Remember, there's hope. When you're on top, when it's ugly, when you feel forsaken, when you're empty and it seems like you're about to breathe your last, because Jesus is hope. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. hearts are quiet. Our lips are quiet. Because you have a sense of the gravity of this day. You have a sense of what this week means. Lord, give us hope in the middle of ugliness. Abandonment. Give us hope when we're all poured out. Give us hope when it feels like the last has been reached. Give us hope in Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stand and sing a hymn that. I think you all know three verses beautifully written to remind us of the hope that we have in Jesus, even though for the next week we'll be beneath his cross. Let's stand together. <clears throat> Yeah. Mm-hmm.
Now let us continue in prayer, responding. Here is our prayers. Abba Father, we are made to hope, and despite feeling ugly, forsaken, empty and often afraid to take our last breath, we overflow in hope because of you, Jesus, and the daily work of the Holy Spirit within us. Lord, for hope we offer thanks. I know, Lord Jesus, bring hope, salvation, peace to our broken world. Bring hope, salvation, and peace and unity to our church across the world as we all await your second coming. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, give hope to those who shelter in subways, whether it be in New York, Chicago, or in the Ukraine. And those who suffered the exile of war, shoulder arms against the tyranny of evil that none of us can comprehend, and face the prospects of losing loved ones and homes by the cruelty of ungodly oppressors. O oh Lord Jesus, in your mercy. We pray fervently that you will bring peace to the Ukraine. Stop this war, Lord. Help Germany and France and England and all the other nations that are gathering for conversations. Father, break the power of evil. Change the heart of President Putin and protect President Zelensky in Jesus' mighty name. For that is our only hope in our world. So Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our brothers and sisters in other places of the world who are persecuted daily for their faith, especially for believers who are targeted for their faith in God. Lord, in your mercy, we ask divine intervention in places where Christians are being martyred, but that your spirit will be poured out in a mighty way, and there will be no more loss of life among those who cannot escape. Lord, in your mercy, for all in trouble, like we heard this morning in your word, sorrow, need, especially refugees by natural disaster, civil unrest and strife, who must endure these works of evil in our world and so many places, Lord, besides the Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you now for all who proclaim the gospel at home, abroad, online, and we pray for all ministers by teaching this hope and discipling others. Lord, in your mercy. We now, Lord, remember our nation and all in authority, our president, our vice president, the Supreme Court justices, member of Congress, those in public service, our soldiers, those that lead them, our police, our firefighters and EMTs. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, now we thank you for our leaders, Archbishop Foley, Bishop Keith, all pastors, clergy, lay ministers, and leaders in our deanery. And Lord, I especially remember those of us that are in our bedrooms, in our closets, as we walk, and our prayer warriors. For all of us that pray quietly for all these needs among our diocese and in our province, Lord, in your mercy. We ask divine intervention for those still sick with COVID, for wisdom and unity and grace, in love for our neighbors and our communities, 
for guidance for our leaders and healthcare professionals, and for Lord, an ending to this afflicting virus. Lord Jesus, in your mercy. And finally, Lord, for all who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and Lord may be traveling for various reasons, we especially lift them up to you in thanksgiving for protection and safety and safe return. Lord, in your mercy. Now, Lord, we do thank you for the hope of calling Father Keith and Don, the entire Hartzell family to grace. And Lord, as they continue to look for housing, give us hope they will find one soon. Lord, in your mercy. And now I ask you, please add your petitions and thanksgiving. Please pray for my friend Paula, her mother Clara. She's transitioning this week. It's and very gentle and it's a blessing. And prayers for my friend Paula. I would also like prayers for my friend Jill, who's attended church here with us. And she's suffering through severe alcoholism right now. And the prayers for her mother Pat, as it's very hard on her mom. And I'm just praying and praying. So I appreciate your prayers. Thank you. Amen. Amen. My daughter again, and God, that she's doing the same. Her for healing, since so happy for her job, and she goes through grief now after having to get replaced. Continued prayers and healing for our great grandson, Conrad. Prayers for our grandson, Matthew, and his wife, Sarah. As they come to this first Easter after the loss of their little Vienna Jane. Give them that hope of Easter and a renewal as they move forward, still recovering from this loss. Lord, I pray for those of us in this room this morning that might be feeling the ugliness of life, the cries that we cry in the middle of the night and feel they go nowhere. Lord, give us all hope that despite the hardness of feeling, that aloneness, the Father, you are there because of Christ. Lord, help us never give up. Never give that hope up. So Lord, this morning, in your mercy, I pray you hear our prayer. Lord God, please come down upon Joshua this day, this eight-year-old boy who has a great mm -hmm. Lord, come down upon him and heal him, Lord. And heal him of all the side effects of the medication he is on. Mm -hmm. Lord, just, just hold him tight. And Lord, hold his mom and dad up as they're going through this. And give him hope Amen. and faith that Amen. they will be healed no matter yes. what. Yes. Yes. Lord, I, I lift up uh, Eula, Miriam, mm -hmm. Aram, all living in the same tiny little German village. Eula, suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome at only age 17. Oh, Jesus. Miriam, a mother of three, suffering from stage three breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Aram, clinging to life after a severe motorcycle accident. Lord, in your mercy, I ask for their healing, both yes, physical, yes, but also Lord. spiritual. In Jesus' name. I lift up all who have no hope this day. Yes, Lord. And I ask that you will release the hole in their heart. Because they must have a hole in their heart. Send harvesters into the field of their lives. Amen, Lord. Amen. And bring them to you, the land that they only need. Dear Lord God, come down upon those who will cross the street not to hear your word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It happened this morning as we were out on the plaza. People actually crossed the streets. They wouldn't hear your word. Mm -hmm. Lord, come down upon them. Send people to them. Let them hear your word, even if they don't want to hear it. In 
Lord, I pray for Pastor Nima as he's online this morning, uh, this week, with the message of hope Amen. to his country fellow men and women. Amen. Lord, anoint him in a special way mm -hmm. as he goes into a country that has been often closed to the gospel. May this week, Lord, he have divine strength and courage to speak forth the truth of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Christ. Make his room where he zooms a holy, holy place that goes out thousands of miles away. We pray this in your name. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in your great mercy, you have promised forgiveness of sins to all who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to you. Have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. These are words of comfort. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with you. Go for it. last week that the Hartzell goats are coming. Hopefully they're bringing humans with them. So please pray for a house, 
um, in which the heart souls could make a home. We're going to be talking about Mary, Jesus' mother, um, in the Partnering with God series on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We talked about Mary Magdalene because of the time of year that we're in last week. So if you'd like to learn a little bit about, more about Mary, uh, please come and join us online. Please pray for the Ukraine and its people at 8 and 8. Um, those are strategic times in their part of the world, and, and we can pray at these times for them. These are the things that we do on an every week basis, and we do it because tithes, offerings, and almsgiving, your generosity, make it possible. We also plant churches when we're about ready to start planting a second church as well. And that's what your One George Per Person Per Sunday does to reach South San Diego and college students. Today we're going to, after the service, eat cake together. And uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for us to share some time of fellowship right outside where we had the palms and we started our service this morning. I've added a service um, to this particular um, week. So Monday, Thursday, at 7 o'clock here in person, we'll have a, a beautiful service together celebrating Christian community. On Good Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon here again in person. And then at 7 o'clock online on Saturday evening, uh, the Easter Vigil, that's on Saturday, and then, of course, Easter Sunday at 10 a.m. here in person. So please come and join us for these services. I'll send a note out to every one of you just to remind you. Let's thank you. Yes, um, one more thing. Thank you, Yvonne, for reminding me. We, we're going to be putting uh, lilies up for Easter. If you would like to have a lily set aside, especially for you, will you please make sure and sign a sheet that looks like this that's going to be at the very back? And um, you'll have Easter lilies that will have been a part of the service um, next Sunday. Okay.
the Lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Thank you for each gift and each giver. Help us to do all that you've called us to do, Lord. Amen. Amen. Everyone's welcome to share communion with us this morning. This is the Lord's table. So we invite you to begin by celebrating your faith and confessing it in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was in from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is your living word from before time and for all ages. By him you created all things, and by him you make all things new. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into our world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. And as our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, 
Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. When he gave him thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood. The new covenant, which has been shed for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Thank you. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit, that they may be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sanctify us also, that we, may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, for by him, and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, both now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing as we pray. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us see the feast. Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you alone can take away our sins and the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. So take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Have I served everyone? Is there anyone who did not receive? Just want to make sure. Stand and pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out on mission to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord in the peace and presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Let us share Jesus and do practical works of compassionate love, mercy and service to bring honor and glory to your name in healing, help and hope to all we need, both now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Okay? All right. God bless you.